I apologize for the delay on this video. Because of the new OGL proposed changes, I had to spend two weeks in order to non-stop finish my writing of the monster classes for PDF. I need to release it before they deauthorize the OGL or I am boned. But we don't have to talk about everything that I have built being threatened by Wizards of the Coast. We are here for dragons, a bronze dragon in fact. We have been short on metallic dragons in this draconic series, but I will of course course correct and remedy that. Today we're talking about Fergal known as the Flying Misfortune, and known to be simultaneously the luckiest and the unluckiest dragon in the world. He always finds himself in trouble, but somehow always survives. It doesn't matter how lopsided the encounter, how screwed up he might be, or how wounded, he always makes it out okay, only to yet fall into another perilous situation again and again. His ability to survive is so miraculous that that many sages in the lore have expressed concerns over whether he is even a dragon at all, and instead a godly avatar or the child of a deity. Uh, some of these concerns might not be at all unfounded either, but before we get into it, this video is brought to you by HelloFresh. Look, what is the purpose of going to the grocery store when you can literally just get food delivered right onto your doorstep? And normally the reason you go to the grocery store is because it is healthier and cheaper than ordering in or going out, but that is not true for HelloFresh. First of all, HelloFresh is extremely healthy because you're cooking it yourself. There is no chef in some restaurant adding like 20 pounds of butter or smothering everything with cheese. The ingredients are delivered to you fresh and separate, just as if you went to the grocery store in the first place. But the portions are prearranged so that there is no waste, and you're not paying for extra stuff that you don't want. The ingredients that you get are based on the recipes that you pick, and they have a lot of cool recipes for you to choose from. They even have featured limited time recipes for seasonal and festive meals. Uh, but the best part is how cheap they are. You're not just saving on gas, you're not just saving on time, Time. You're not just saving on getting the exact proportions that you need, but on top of all of that, you're saving because of the incredibly generous coupons that HelloFresh provides. Use my link or go to HelloFresh.com and use code POGREXGEN21 for 21 free meals plus free shipping. Once you click, my description will live update to count up the purchases. 21 free meals. You just cannot miss this out. I am always happy to have HelloFresh as a sponsor because there's just nothing better than eating healthy and saving time. Time that I could use to write more supplements for you guys and more videos too. Click the link in the description and use my code to get a huge discount. But now, back onto the video. Felgalos as a dragon is fascinating because he eschews the personality traits that you would expect in all dragons. Uh, he lacks draconic pride, draconic greed, draconic intelligence? Cunning? Um, well, Felgalos, to say the least, is quite unique. Uh, he is called the Flying Misfortune because he is exceedingly clumsy and aloof, but uh, the degree of his clumsiness reaches almost like comedic levels. Say, for example, while flying, he might notice a radiant light in the middle of the night, and as he would land over to check it, uh, he would then realize that he's actually landed in the middle of an orc encampment. And the light just a torch held by the powerful chieftain. Uh, you might see Felgalos hunting a small dinosaur for lunch, only to follow it into a clearing where a conclave of evil naga have gathered for a sacrificial ritual. Uh, this bronze dragon crashes onto things sometimes instead of landing. He gets himself caught on his own AoE spells. He gets stuck on doors when trying to escape from enemies. If something can go wrong for Felgalos, it will go wrong for Felgalos. This is compounded by the carefree attitude that he possesses. In fact, uh, one would say it is indeed this personality trait of his that gets him in trouble the most. Uh, Philogalos has an endless curiosity and an exhausting degree of optimism. If he learns that there is a major war going on, he just has to check it out. Of course, he is not just going to see the battle from far away in the sky. No, that would be silly. He has to get in close. It's just simply more exciting that way. 
Yeah, okay, maybe last time he did that, he was brought down by a wizard's earthbind spell and almost killed by a whole battalion of hobgoblins, but these are not hobgoblins, these are orcs. They are totally different. See, when something goes wrong, he doesn't really, like, learn from experience. And even when he tries to be careful, like once in a blue moon, he screws up or something goes terribly wrong. The amount of times that Felgolos has almost died during his life is uncountable, yet... He still lives. If he has to escape a complex where a bomb is set to blow in five minutes, he will escape, but when the timer says five minutes and one second, he will get terribly burned, suffer an almost deadly injury, but escape nonetheless and live. This is why sages believe that he might have some kind of deific spark in him, or he might be blessed by Timora, the goddess of luck, or... Perhaps, by all accounts, he should have died ten times over, but some innate power of his grants him life when his back is against the wall. Now, the truth, of course, escapes us, but it could be a little bit of everything. See, Felgalos is an incredibly practiced spellcaster, much more so than a dragon of his age could be. At least that was the case back in 2nd edition. See, the Forgotten Realms in 2nd edition was set in the year 1367. Uh, fifth edition, on the other hand, is set in the year 1490, so so it's about 130 years later. The lore for this dragon was written entirely by Ed Greenwood, but it was written for second edition, and so the lore that we have tells us his abilities as he had them back in the year 1367. Now, normally, 130 years of difference means nothing to a dragon, so I, I never bring this up, and I haven't done that on any of my draconic videos. Uh, the difference between a dragon dragon being, you know, 1200 years of age versus 1330 years of age is just like nothing. But in this case, it is a bit different because Felgolos was only about 30 or 40 years old back in 2nd edition. He was a juvenile dragon, so in 5th edition he should be about 160 years old now, which makes him an adult dragon. And uh, indeed, he does appear in a 5th edition official adventure, and he is an adult dragon in it. So that's why I wanted to bring this up, because there is a substantial difference in power between his 2nd edition incarnation and his 5th edition. Now, in any case, by the time that he was a juvenile dragon, he was already an incredible spellcaster, being able to cast spells equivalent to that of a 14th level sorcerer. Uh, that is because his parents were extraordinary spellcasters as well. Quote, Born to a pair of magically mighty bronze dragons who have since used their art to travel to other planes, Felgolos was taught to experiment, to observe, and to play with magic. When other hatchlings were exulting in tearing apart their first cattle, uh, Felgolos was tinkering with a pluck-and-grab teleport spell that could uproot trees and stumps at his behest, so that he could make fences around his own stolen herd of cattle. When other young dragons were raiding their first villages, uh, Felgolos was lying atop cracks, using spying spells to look around villages and learn how these strange creatures called humans and half-elves lived. His parents encouraged him to go on independent forays. When he wanted to play, they cast spells that linked their three minds and then worked magic together. Uh, this upbringing has given Felgolos three unusual qualities. A carefree self-reliance that steers him well clear of the treasure-grasping paranoia that afflicts so many dragons. A knowledge of everyday life of all things on the surface of Faerun, and a mastery of magic far beyond the norm of his age." End quote. Since he was a child, Felgolos always had a penchant for getting into trouble, for not doing what normal dragons ought to do, and so his parents, who were planeswalkers, before they left this planet, entrusted him to an arch wizard, where Felgolos would work as a steed while the wizard would keep him safe and teach him further about magic. Now, the arch wizard, whose name was Thongamir Halargoth, happened to be an arch wizard of Halrua. 
Now, if you guys remember, of course, we briefly mentioned Halrua during our video for Sundarisilum, where we talked about how she had these hundreds of these tokens, which each held the power of a legendary item, tokens which were made in Halrua. Now, Halrua was, slash is, a civilization that splintered off of the Netherese Empire, a splinter group that did not fall when the empire collapsed. And so, uh, they are one of the few places in the whole world that still holds knowledge and magic items items from the height of arcane mastery. Essentially, they have magic items that were created using spells of 10th and 11th level spells that cannot be duplicated anymore. They also have tons of knowledge that not even the best archwizards of other countries have access to. And, well, this archwizard taught Felgolos a lot about magic, but also enchanted him with a few sets of permanent effects. Not that dissimilar, actually, to what was done to Arvaturis, by her old master, but <laughs> Arvaturis's old master could not compete with an arch wizard from the Halruan kingdom. The magics that flow through Felgolos' veins are absolutely insane. So basically, if Felgolos is completely immune to spells from the enchantment, necromancy, and alteration schools of magic. It doesn't matter what the spell is, it doesn't matter what spell level they are, if they belong to those schools, he is just not affected by them. But further, he actually instead gains beneficial effects if he's ever targeted by those spells. If it's an enchantment spell, he gains hit points equal to the spell level. If he has full hit points, he instead gains temporary hit points. Uh, oh, and this also would include any charm effect, even if that charm effect comes from a natural source, uh, so long as it is a magical effect. So uh, Dryads and Succubi cannot affect him with their own charm effects. Now, if the spell is a necromancy spell, uh, then he instead regenerates one hit point every minute per level of the spell, and the regeneration would last then for a full 24 hours. Uh, the spell also stacks, so if he gets targeted by a 7th level Finger of Death and a 4th level Blight spell, those spells are negated and Felgolos would start regenerating 11 hit points every minute for the next 24 hours. If the spell is an alteration spell, uh, then Felgolos is empowered to be able to cast the spell Teleport without the need for a spell slot. And now, it's unclear for how long he could wait before casting this free teleport, but we know that if he is targeted multiple times by many alteration spells, uh, then he can actually save those uses of the spell teleport to cast later. We just don't know how later that would be. But we do know that this peculiar type of teleport uh, does allow him to take unwilling creatures with him, which is something that teleport normally cannot do in 5th edition. The caveat would be that for him to take a creature, with him, they would have to be touching him when the spell is cast. Uh, this, of course, is abused by Fulgolos in some really fun ways, where he enjoys leaving people in very hard to reach areas like a lonely island in the middle of the sea or high up on a mountain where it would take days to climb down. Uh, do keep in mind, however, that uh, Fulgolos is a very kind hearted and well spirited dragon. He is just not cruel, so he's not going to teleport someone into lava or in a place where they would have no chance of surviving, but indeed, uh, this ability has saved his skin more times than he can count. Now, these unimaginably powerful enchantments are the secret concoction of the archwizard Thungamir, and uh, now that he is dead, those secrets died with him. However, it is believed that there are written records of the spells and how they were done, but they are up on his home. Uh, the place is called the North Towers, and uh, in spite of its name, it is believed to be one singular wizard tower that is set in the foothills on the northern border of Halrua. The place, however, is crawling with really powerful carnivorous plants. Uh, see, Thornica Mayer had a thing for studying flora, and his vast collection of murderous plants was legendary, so uh, people haven't been able to fully explore his old keep, uh, but it is believed that the secrets to Philgolo's powers uh, could be found there. Now, I digress. It is thanks to these enchantments that protect his body and his incredible talent for sorcery that by the time that he was only like 40-ish years of age, he was already considered to be a challenge rating 22 young dragon. 
and uh, it is not difficult to figure out why. See, a, a 14th level human spellcaster is generally considered to be roughly about a challenge rating 9 or 10, which is of course like really high, but now turn that human into a dragon, right? You basically double the hit points, you give it a massive boost to its armor class, and then give it the natural powers of a dragon such as blindsight and elemental immunity, powerful physical attacks, and a deadly breath weapon. And then on top of that, make him immune to three entire spell categories, two of which heal him instead of damaging him. That's how you get a juvenile dragon only a few decades old to be a challenge rating 22 monster, a force to be reckoned with in the world. Plus, now in 5th edition, we know that he is an adult now. So since we know mathematically the difference between a young dragon and an adult dragon of its same kind, we know that in 5th edition, Felglost now should be about a CR 29 creature. And that's without presuming that at this point he probably has mastered spells of up to 9th level. But then further, if he were to hypothetically speaking be let to grow to full maturity, he would be an ancient bronze dragon of challenge rating 36, so roughly about the same strength as Rolotham, which we covered in our last video. And uh, getting up there really close to Inferno, the strongest natural dragon. He is of course uh, not there yet, just about a thousand years too early, but it does look like he will become a contender on the list of the most powerful dragons in the world once he finishes growing up. Now, it is good to keep in mind that in spite of all of this, uh, Philoglos still keeps fumbling and getting almost killed, like every week. He is just not cunning, he's just not very smart. He's just a bumbling idiot with a heart of gold who goes where his heart tells him to go, without a care in the world, not afraid of anything. He doesn't have any lairs, he doesn't have any territory, he just flies and rests wherever he fancies. He finds himself constantly just stumbling upon other dragons' territories without realizing though most old dragons have at this point learned of Helglos and know that he doesn't really seek to claim any territory or even treasure, so most small dragons simply let him be. Felglos has never had any desire for gold or really any kind of treasure whatsoever, which is also uh, the reason why he doesn't really have a true lair since he doesn't have a need to stash loot at all. He does have a few sleeping places that he prefers all around the continent, but nothing that would constitute like a real home. Now, Felglos can be quite popular depending on who you ask. It is quite memorable after all to see a dragon literally crash onto a party by accident or find himself embroiled in a war that has nothing to do with him. He is a dragon that is just frankly very fun to talk about because of all of the insane things that he gets up to. Now, for example, Felglos has a particular dislike of the Centarum and quite enjoys ruining their plans whenever they attempt nefarious deeds. Uh, the Centarum have a fortress called the Citadel of the Raven, which is located right here. A very popular tale of Felglos talks about how the dragon, in an attempt to assault that fortress, ended up ripping apart the tallest tower of the keep and then using it as a bat in order to swat a group of enraged beholders that were defending the keep. And that's just like an example of how Felgolos just operates. You know, this is the sort of stuff that just makes him famous across the Forgotten Realms. Now, within Arcane Circles, uh, Felglos is famous for the creation of a really interesting spell called Frame Teleport. So, Frame Teleport allows Felglos to sort of open a gate in a framed object that leads onto another framed object. So for example, he could open up a portal that leads from a painting onto a door anywhere in the planet, provided that the painting and the door both have wooden frames. It has to be wooden frames. Now the question is, uh, why is this any good? Well, it is very strong because you don't have to go fully through the gate for it to function. Felgolos could sneak his head and claws into the portal and then come out on the other side. He could then claw and bite enemies while his legs and the rest of his body would sit safely on the original location. Uh, the spell can last for a few minutes, which is fantastic because he can push in half of his body to do whatever he needs to do on that side and then return back safely. Uh, the spell further makes it so that regardless of the size of the framed object on the other side, uh, Felglos can magically push through if he wants. And he can do that without disrupting or breaking the framed object. So his full draconic body could theoretically just pass through a very tiny and small framed painting. Further, the 
portal is silent and basically invisible in the sense that it is not like, you know, glowing. It's not a glowing magical portal that is obvious to the eye. The framed object would look quite normal to the naked eye, and so Felglos has the ability to use this spell as a spying tool. Quote, he has used this spell to eavesdrop on covert meetings of conspirators, in one instance posing as a stuffed dragon head on a wall. Uh, bedchamber conferences, secret priestly rituals, and even wizards at work on their spells, end quote. Uh, he also has another exclusive spell that he has created, which is the one that was mentioned back on his childhood, uh, the one that allowed him to uproot dead trees with teleportation magic. Uh, the spell is called Snatchport, and it is a 6th level alteration spell that effectively uh, lets him teleport an object that he sees onto another location that he also sees. The minutia of the spell is complicated, but the concept of what it does is fairly simple. He can snatch an object from far away, he can dismantle complicated constructions by teleporting away key components, uh, or he can simply teleport an enormous rock into the air uh, <laughs> right above an enemy so that it falls and damages the foe. If anything, we can say that Felgolos is a teleport master. Quote, Whim, curiosity, and a desire to revel in constant fun uh, govern every act of Felgolos. If he ever turned to evil or to any aim or scheme in a determined, persistent way, Felgolos would be a formidable foe. He seems incapable of this sort of behavior, however, treating opponents he faces again and again as some sort of amusement laid on for him, never as enemies to be hated, feared, or slain. Instead, Felgolos spends his days wandering aimlessly about the realms, peering at this and that. He's likely always to find fresh trouble to blunder into, and he will always like helping creatures who are lost or in need. Uh, sooner or later, such acts are bound to bring him his death. Yet, he has cheated certain doom so often that it is hard to say what, if anything, can destroy him. Perhaps the claims of sages about his divine nature are true." End quote. Thank you guys so much for watching. Do check out my Monster Classes 3 PDF, currently live on MrRex.store. This is a set of character classes that I wrote myself. With Monster Classes 3, you can play as a familiar, as a vampire, or as a treant. These function as both your race and your class, so they give you both racial features and class features. The lore of the creatures is all in there, I, I wrote it up myself, and you get rollable tables with a lot of really cool backstory options to help you build your character. Uh, the familiar is a pure support class unlike anything really that exists in 5th edition. You basically bond onto another player character and then deal damage when that player deals damage. Uh, plus, your whole arsenal is about making that player that you're bound to stronger. You can deflect damage, you can heal, and so much more. As subclasses, we have the Soto Dragon, which is great at damage mitigation, the Fairy, which uses her Fairy Dust to create a lot of really cool wild magic effects. So if you like rolling on tables for wild magic, this this is the one for you. And then we have the Animal Familiar, which is a spellcaster that specializes in spells that buff other characters and can even restore their spell slots. Uh, honestly, my favorite class that I have designed. The Treant functions like a melee druid, which honestly we desperately needed. It has a really cool feature that lets it build charges whenever he casts spells, so that then he can spend those charges to either give a massive boost to healing and increase in armor class or deliver a deadly Treant punch for a lot of damage. It is a fairly easy class to learn for those who just want something a little bit more simple. And then we have the Vampire. I went pretty deep on this one with rules on how much blood you have to consume, uh, rules on using your coffin, how to deal with the sun, and of course, uh, your special undead nature. The class has a system uh, relatively similar to Warlock Invocations with an absolutely enormous list of possible options that you can choose to customize your Vampire. Because as we all know, all Vampires are different. Different. Whether you're looking at Castlevania, uh, Strahd, Dracula, they all have different features, themes, and abilities. Uh, plus, we do have three subclasses, the Dark Knight for a heavy armored melee vampire, the Shadow Fang for a stealthier ambusher, and then the Blood Mage, which lets you manipulate blood and cast spells using blood magic. Uh, this is my Monster Classes 3. It's on my store, MrRex.store. Uh, you can find the link as well in the video description. Please check it out. If it sounds interesting to you to be able to play as a monstrous class check it out thank you guys
guys so much for your support. Truly appreciate it. I, I am sure you guys are going to enjoy the classes. And I uh, will see you all on the next video.